Hi, I'm Chris Joseph, and this is for my Full Sail University art history class. I am at the Dayton Visual Arts Center with Eve Butter. Butter. Cavoli. Cavoli. Butter Cavoli. Just call me Eva. <laughs> Eva is, is a lot easier. Um, so we have a few questions for you for my class. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate And I'm not an artist, I'm the director. She's the director <laughs> of this wonderful place. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sort of shoot a few pictures so people can see it. Um, so I'm really happy that you can be with me today, even though you're feeling bad. Uh, I have a little bit of a cold, but I guess everybody doesn't need to know that. Thanks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you see, as a role of visual arts in a mass media world, and particularly in your profession. I think that the visual arts have always informed our mass media world. I mean, every commercial that you see, uh, industrial design products, I mean, they're all informed by visual art. Um, artists are working all around us, you know, they make our things, they make our movies, they make our vacuum cleaners, they, you know, the, there's an influence of visual arts in, in all, in everything that we touch nowadays. Um, I think mass media, I mean, what we're doing right now, you know, our smartphones, the way TV and commercials and movies and, and media and concerts and everything, those are all informed by, by art and all very much informed by visual art, we're a visual culture. So we've learned to read, we've learned to read objects and read things. I mean, if you see something, it's just like like the I don't know, like an at sign or a um, not an at sign. A Steve Jobs onto something. What I'm saying, things have yeah. Steve Jobs was onto something. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many visual icons that have become iconic. Right. Exactly. You know, and and that all has to do with the visual culture. So I think I mean we're being streamed with it at all times. Exactly. See, right. uh, when somebody says, oh, look at that, or look at how cool, or that seems new, like a cool, I keep on going back to like the idea of a, a commercial or a movie or the way that a concert goes, you know, that sort of media. It's, it's been done in visual art for years and years. Right, many, many right. Many times and it's taken from that. the culture. Exactly. Yeah, through exactly. communications and media technologies, uh, imagery is all, almost instantly available, just like we were talking about. Yeah. Um, do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on the But I'm world? not one of those people that says, oh, the way things used to be. Right. I, I believe we live in a time that is the most exciting time. I mean, you know, you've seen that, that, that uh, history, um, you know, that timeline where we have learned more and advanced more in the past 50 years than we right. did like for 500 years. Right. I think that's fascinating, and that is all from... That's all from technology. So I believe it does change art, and it changes the way we see art. I mean, we're sitting in a gallery right now with static images that are up on a wall, like they have been for hundreds and hundreds of years. Right. But artists, because they're always on the forefront, have adapted what art is. And art can be just about, it can take any form. Uh, you can walk into a room, and there can be a TV set with a video and then a remnant of a performance, and, and that can be something the artist created. It doesn't even have to be something the artist created nowadays. It can right. be something that they decided to put in the context of viewing, the context of a gallery. So I am all for changing media and keeping up with it and, and, and re-moving uh, our borders and our barriers around to, <laughs> to re-context it. Right. So it is all art. So yeah, I'm I'm open to it. What proper images do you see that are frequently reach out th throughout the entertainment industry? Oh gosh. Um, like Happy Bunny. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> I you know I'm sure we're a little bit different generation, but I'm sure I mean when I see videos, uh, music videos, and when I watch uh, TV shows or I see movies. Um, they all borrow from things that have been in art. I mean, I remember a long time ago, 10 years ago, I was watching like a Madonna video or even a Lady Gaga video. Okay, Lady Gaga meat dress, can I just tell you? No. That was done in the 80s by an artist named Yana Starbeck. Look it up. Um, so, really? Yeah. The oh, meat yeah. dress has, the been, meat done dress has been done she before. Borrowed. She oh, borrowed. Wow. It's all been done before. It, and it's, it's hard for new artists because it's like there's been so much done over centuries and millennia. But that's millenniums. always been the job of <laughs> right. artists is yeah. to reinterpret, you know, an expression in the context of art time. Right. That's why I always tell students that if you want to learn about history, you can learn about history through art because it is always a reflection of our time. Right, exactly. I mean, when you look at what the abstract expressionists were doing, 
Well, that was, um, they were in response to what came before them. And when you look at what the artists in the 60s were doing, they were in response to commercialism and industry that was happening. The Renaissance period. When you look at the Renaissance period, that's when, you know, music was allowed to take different forms and have different instruments and, and you know, different composers were all of a sudden not just composers of the court, but they were allowed to experiment. So right. art is always a reflection of a time.